I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're exploring the deep themes of faith, destiny, and human free will with John Payne. He has penned a powerful book. It is called Then Comes the Flood. This thought-provoking novel delves into the tension between God's providence and human choices, revealing how even life's darkest moments can be used for a greater purpose. With a narrative that intertwines real-life struggles and spiritual insights, his book invites readers to reflect on the power of grace and redemption. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his remarkable book. The links are below this interview. John, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you. Good to be here. Let's start out by talking about the inspiration, where it came from for Then Comes the Flood. Well, I've been uh, studying the Bible uh, just about all my life, my adult life, and and I uh, became a Christian at an early age. Actually, my mother led me to Christ when I was eight or nine years old. Mm -hmm. And so I got an early interest in the Bible, and she made sure that I had books to read and to study, and you know, not only about the Bible, but we, but our home was, was filled with good books to read. Uh, I actually attended Mid-South Bible College after I graduated from high school, and mm -hmm. I, I spent three years there. Then I moved on to Tennessee Temple in, in uh, Chattanooga. So I studied the Bible and, and had a lot of discussions with, with uh, a number of folks uh, about topics in the Bible. And, and one of the questions I hear most office, or often, or I've heard most often, is, why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? And I hear a lot of answers about that, but a lot of times those answers are not really enough. Actually, you know, mm -hmm. we have all these why questions, and a lot of those answers don't don't uh, don't uh, answer that why. And so, what I want to do with uh, uh, with the background I have with the, with the Bible, I wanted to, to tell a story. Uh, that that uh, shows how God can use these these uh, uh, sometimes terrible terrible events in our lives for His will, mm -hmm. and in telling that how uh, you know it's it's a way to show that <clears throat> uh, God's will is really accomplished by His allowing us to have our own free will, mm -hmm. and so when you look at that that uh, providence of God versus free will of man. That's a question that, that really uh, uh, is, is difficult to answer. So I wanted to tell a story that helps, uh, that, that may help people to see how, uh, you know, God's working uh, to accomplish his will through our own free will action hmm. uh, <clears throat> uh, takes place. Talk to us a little bit about the story itself. Give us an overview of the book. Okay, the story, uh, there, the story, Two protagonists in the, in the book. It's uh, Megan and Kayla. Mm -hmm. uh, Megan is a uh, pretty successful uh, young lady uh, who who works at St. Jude. Her family uh, uh, has a company in England that provided the proton uh, nuclear uh, <clears throat> equipment for St. Jude Hospital here in Memphis, and so she works uh, in in uh, the uh, proton therapy center at St. Jude. Mm -hmm. As a freshman in college, uh, she was at an event at uh, uh, a Veterans Day event celebrating 9 11. She was a year after 9 11, two years after 9 11. And uh, <clears throat> she was, she met a, a combat veteran at the, at the uh, uh, festivities. They hit it off. Uh, very well, and uh, at the end of the day, she wound up uh, uh, going into his motel room just to have a glass of wine and celebrate the day with her. And uh, and he molested her. He mm. raped her. And so that's you know from her perspective, she was not a believer, and uh, mm. her her question uh, as, as she dealt with all that. If, if there's a God, why would he uh, let that happen to me? 
Mm -hmm. uh, the other character is Kayla. Uh, she, she's the mother of two. She's got a, a seven-month-old son and a four-year-old daughter. Uh, she is a dedicated Christian. Her and her husband are actively involved in the church, and uh, they're in, they're intent upon uh, uh, their lives being in the center of God's will. Uh, <clears throat> one day, she was driving home from a from a uh, uh, a Bible study, and uh, uh, as she was going down the the uh, very busy intersection, very busy street in Memphis. Uh, a car pulled out, uh, tapped the back of her car. She lost control, skidded around, and crashed into a light pole. Hmm. Uh, it it, it uh, heavily damaged the the, uh, the back side of her car. And uh, uh, dur during the accident, she tapped the car of Megan as Megan was pulling out of a an ATM. Mm -hmm. And so they're involved in this accident together. Well, uh, uh, Kayla's little boy, her, her baby son, was injured. He was taken to the hospital. And uh, a couple of days later, he passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, Kayla and Megan got to know each other after that accident, became friends. Uh, so, so Kayla's question, why, was, why did a God who I love and who I'm, I'm trying to be in the center of his will, allow this mm -hmm. to happen to me. So there's the thing. If there's a God, why did not let it happen? And why did my God allow this to happen? And so the story is, uh, uh, involves uh, Kayla and Megan as they come together and become friends and, uh, uh, and, and are, are involved in their own relationship building uh, and and Kayla trying to get her spiritual life back to where it needs to be. She, she kind of did had a little bit of what we might call backsliding, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. it's, but it's her story of getting back to her faith and it's Megan's story of uh, <clears throat> along with Kayla is, is uh, uh, how all that has happened to her involves her relationship to God. Yeah. It is such a troubling thing that life is so fragile, that life turns on a dime, that the unexpected can happen when you least expect it. Uh, you can lose a child in a car accident. You can be you know, molested in a uh, motel. Uh, these are real things that happen to people all too frequently, and they do get angry at God at times and say, why me? Um, how could you let this happen? Why didn't you stop it? And those are the um, visceral reactions that you're trying to help people make sense of, that fundamental question of why does God let bad things happen to good people? And the reverse of that is, why does it seem that all these good things happen with people that may not be considered so good? Exactly. Yeah. It, so it's, you know, I've always looked at it is that we're not puppets on a string with the puppet master telling us what to do. Uh, we're his creation that have the free will to do A or B, to drive fast or not drive fast. And, uh, you know, but some things are out of our control. We get into a car, we're driving fine, and somebody's drunk and heads down the road the wrong way. I mean, there are so many you know, um, variables that, uh, that take place that, uh, you know, it is hard to get your, wrap your head around it all, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I uh, deal with uh, is, uh, um, is middle knowledge, what we call middle knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, God's middle knowledge is something that, that uh, I believe uh, is scriptural. Mm -hmm. Done a lot of I've done a lot of reading and research mm -hmm. for the book in, in terms of middle knowledge. And uh, it, it uh, <clears throat> I'll start with, if, if John F. Kennedy had not been assassinated, he would have bombed North Vietnam. Is that mm -hmm. a truth? God only knows. Well, that's middle knowledge. God knows all the things that may happen 
in any any given situation, depending on how we choose to act. Uh, they're, they're called uh, counterfactuals. A counterfactual is uh, not what happened in an occasion, but what may happen depending on the actions taken by uh, the individual who has free will to act and do whatever they want to do. Yeah. I think there are, there are many, many uh, instances or, or stories in the Bible that are related to God's middle knowledge. Mm. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of an if-then uh, situation where it, if if, uh, if I take this action, then this will happen, this kind of thing. From a, yeah. from a person who is thinking in middle knowledge terms, uh, it's really not if then, it's, it's more if only. Mm. Uh, if only I had done something different. Yeah. Uh, if only I had not gone into that guy's hotel. Mm -hmm. If only I had pulled it. One of the things uh, when, uh, when Megan's car, when she loses control, she just taps uh, 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 when Kayla loses control. She just taps Megan's car. No damage whatsoever. And uh, and, and uh, Megan's uh, what if question is, if I had just pulled out mm. a sooner, Kayla may have hit my car and her son may still be alive. Mm. Uh, in, in the Bible, uh, as I say, there are many, many, many uh, uh, places that deal with middle knowledge. Uh, it's called middle knowledge because it, it's kind of between uh, God's natural knowledge mm -hmm. and his free knowledge. Natural knowledge is uh, deals with truth. You know, uh, a, a triangle has three sides. God's, God can't change that, and he can't make a triangle with four sides, you know, that kind of thing. Yes. But he has all, his um, omniscient has all, those, all that knowledge his free knowledge is what he uh, uh, accomplishes to achieve his will based on what's happening in the world. And, and, uh, uh, so middle knowledge is in between there. God knows uh, all the all the counterfactuals. Mm -hmm. doesn't have any control over them. And he's chosen not to control that because he's given his free will. But he has knowledge of all the counterfactuals. And so he knows what what's going to happen in any given situation, depending on what we choose to do. Yeah. Uh, Pharaoh, he wouldn't let the wouldn't let the people go, and these plagues. Well, God had four plagues; he would not let the people go. So God knew what Pharaoh would do if he if he did a fifth plague. Yeah. And so he did. He killed his you know killed the firstborn. If Pharaoh lost his son, the Pharaoh could say, if only I had let the, the, the children of Israel go after the fourth place, my mm -hmm. son would still be alive. So that's all the kinds of things that we have to deal with when we're looking at why all these bad things happen to good people. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not God doing it. God allows things to happen. Mm -hmm. But most of those come from the free will uh Counterfactuals that other people have, have exactly done prior to whatever it is that we're up against. So, exactly. You know, the situation where it, what caused Kayla's accident was a was a guy. Uh, I, I don't want to get too far into that because mm -hmm. that's Peter's story, but but uh, he just accidentally tapped his accelerator. He was waiting to pull out in the car into the traffic. Tapped the accelerator, went forward four feet, and touched Kayla's car, and she lost her back. Mm. If only he had stayed on the brakes. You know? Yeah. Uh, you know that's that's what the story deals with, and and uh, uh, I hope I hope that it gives people a better way to understand some of these things that uh, that, that they are if onlys, and why did all these things happen? Exactly. Well, I think it's a great exploration of the sovereignty of God and the free will of man and people. And uh, I think it's very provocative. Um, and I think it is a question that people struggle with, and this will help them have a better understanding and come to peace with God and their faith 
during times of trouble when they feel like lashing out against God is actually the time they should try to pull God closest to themselves. And I think that's so important. The name of the book is Then Comes the Flood. It is a thought-provoking novel that delves into the tension between God's providence and human choices, revealing how even life's darkest moments can be used for a greater John, thank you so much for joining me here today on Spotlight. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time and your insight to the folks at home. I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.